Hey guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 1 of topic 12, Experimental Techniques and Chemical Analysis. In experiments, it is important to take accurate measurements. Let's look at the tools or apparatus used for measuring time, temperature, mass and volume. Stopwatches are used to measure how long a reaction takes. Digital stopwatches are very accurate and can measure the time to one or two decimal places. Time is measured in seconds or minutes. Thermometers measure the temperature of substances or the environment. Digital thermometers and traditional ones are common in labs. Traditional laboratory thermometers are not as accurate as digital thermometers, which can measure temperature more accurately to one decimal place. Temperature is measured in degrees Celsius. Balancers are used to measure the mass of substances or objects. Electronic balancers are widely used and are usually precise to two decimal places. Before measuring, the electronic balance should be set to zero and wait for the reading to stop changing before recording it. Mass is measured in grams. Now, when it comes to measuring volume, there are different suitable apparatus depending on the level of precision needed and the type of substance being measured. To measure the volume of liquids, we may use burets, volumetric pipettes or measuring cylinders. Burets allow you to carefully measure and release small or variable amounts of liquid with high accuracy. They are commonly used in titrations where you add one liquid to another until a reaction is complete. Volumetric pipettes are designed to measure and transfer a fixed volume of liquid very accurately. They are ideal when you need to ensure precise amounts such as in experiments requiring exact measurements. Measuring cylinders are used for general liquid measurements in the lab. They are less accurate than pipettes or burets and are used when exact precision isn't needed. Only an approximate amount is needed. Volume of liquids is measured in milliliters, which is the same as cubic centimeters. If we want to measure the volume of a gas, we may use a gas syringe. Gas syringes are specially designed to collect and measure gases produced during chemical reactions like oxygen or carbon dioxide. Now let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of apparatus used in labs. Stopwatches are easy to use, provides accurate time measurements. But the disadvantages is human error. Like slow reactions in starting or stopping a timer can make the recorded time slightly inaccurate. Thermometers are simple to use. However, traditional thermometers are fragile and hazardous if broken. Reading from an angle can give an incorrect result. Balancers have high accuracy. However, they are sensitive to vibrations and air currents. Burets provide precise liquid measurements ideal for titrations. But the meniscus must be read carefully to avoid inaccurate measurements. 
Volumetric pipettes are very accurate for fixed volumes, but they are limited to specific volumes, example 25 ml or 50 ml. Measuring cylinders are quick and simple for general liquid measurements and they are available in various sizes. But they are less precise than pipettes or burettes. Gas syringes measure gas volumes accurately. But they are fragile. They can leak if not handled properly. To identify how good the chosen experimental methods are, one must check the following. Has the right equipment been chosen for what needs to be measured? Will enough data be obtained to analyze and draw conclusions? Can the experiment be repeated to check if the results are reliable and accurate? Is it a suitable range of results covered by the plan? Each method and apparatus has its strengths and limitations, so the choice depends on the experiment's requirements for precision and practicality. Moving on, these terms are fundamental to understanding separation techniques and solutions in chemistry. A solvent is a substance that dissolves a solute. For example, water is a common solvent that dissolves salt or sugar. A solute is a substance that gets dissolved in a solvent. For example, salt is the solute when dissolved in water. A solution is a mixture formed when one or more solutes are fully dissolved in a solvent. For instance, salt water is a solution of salt in water. A saturated solution is a solution that contains the maximum concentration of solute that can dissolve in the solvent at a specific temperature. Any additional solute will not dissolve and may settle at the bottom. Residue is the material that remains behind after processes like evaporation, distillation or filtration. For example, sand left on filter paper after filtering a sand water mixture is the residue. Filtrate is the liquid or solution that passes through a filter. For instance, in a sand water mixture, the water that passes through the filter paper is the filtrate. That concludes part 1 of topic 12, Experimental Techniques and Chemical Analysis. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!